and Pablo went to the store. I know I hadn't been doing a lot of talking uh, during this cotton harvest, but believe me when I say it, that this farm is extremely, extremely rough and it's hard to pay attention or pay attention to these rocks because I run a bunch of rocks through this machine. But we've got the Thunder Creek fuel trailer up here with the light up. We're cleaning out the heads. Amigo is up there on the top with a leaf blower. We have picked all that we have sprayed uh, the first time. It's gonna get super cold here Monday, 60 for the high, 34 I think, or 36 for the low. We're gonna spray the rest of this cotton tomorrow and Friday. We've got to get it sprayed. So uh, that's what we're gonna to do tomorrow. We're gonna to spray cotton and get that finished up. But y'all can see Amigo up there on the top, giving her a fit, ain't you Amigo? Yeah. Mucho dirty. Yeah. Now look. <laughs> But me and Pablo is cleaning the heads out. Y'all can see they're super, super filthy. Uh, all this old crap on it. We got to get all that crap off. But uh, yeah, this this light tower, it's going to be awesome, guys, because we clean these heads out every night before we go home. And we always pull a tractor up here in front of the headers so we can see. But having this light tower, 
it's, it's got yeah we've used this fuel trailer probably four or five times in the past two or three days i mean this is it has been a valuable valuable asset i'm gonna tell you if you're on the fence whether to buy a truck or a trader you better buy a trader you'll thank me later i promise you because this thing has been phenomenal and i'm not saying it's because it's brand new and all that it is set up 100 percent perfect you couldn't have got it no better perfect uh we don't have to hunt for tools everything is here <laughs> you don't have to move two trucks we got one truck in the field that's it super simple but i'm gonna hand you off to pablo and maybe he can show y'all kind of what i'm cleaning out here this just gets built up throughout the day just a mess Just wads and wads of crap in there but this cotton it picked a little over a bale i'd say if i had to guess uh this field we just come out of right here it didn't pick a bale we normally make a whole module and a roll off that little patch right there we've been, we've made a roll and a half off that patch it's terrible yeah but it was planted a lot later See here. See how filthy these moisture columns get? Just gobs and gobs of crap. And this actually, like I said before in the videos, this runs water through this and a cleaner to clean these spindles right before they go into the row to pick. And it keeps all that green sap and everything off the spindles to where they where they're clean when they go into the row. But we try to clean these off about twice a day. Sometime middle day and then at the end of the day. But cotton picking is a uh, nasty, nasty business, I can tell you that. And I'll show you our tools that we use. This is an old rib out of a 9965 cotton picker. I think that's the rear rib. And we bend the hook on them. And we drill a hole in the other end so we can hang it on the side over there. And one putty knife. That's all you need to clean these hands out. But you take this thing right here and you can stick it way back up in there. And pull all that crap out around your dog when you drill them. Just like right here. You can stick it around, around the side of that drum. And pull all that old crap out of there. That you normally couldn't reach. Just like that, it's clean, ready to go. Now we roll it over and do another. Them's two of the hardest working boys I ever had right there. Pop boy's gonna clean the windows off with the California duster. Before the dew falls on them, Amigo's finishing up blowing. We got the heads cleaned out and uh, we'll top it off a few and then we'll go to the house. But yeah, this, this setup right here is going to pay for itself time and time again, especially with cotton picking. Because you need lights when you're trying to get this picker cleaned up. And we normally clean them up when we quit of a night. Everything, just like, just like we're doing now. We cleaned up of a night so we don't look like this first thing in the morning. You can see I'm super filthy. But uh, this cotton, it's, it's not the best in the world, but I mean, I, I think our worst is gonna be right there around Elor. Uh, a little sandy dirt right through there, and I think our worst is gonna be right there. I mean, I, it still picked over a bale, so I mean, I thought it was gonna be worse than that. So uh, I don't know, we'll just have to pick it, let air and gin it, whatever comes across the scales that's what we got that's cotton you don't never count it out till it's in the sack if anybody grows cotton they know what i'm talking about uh it can be sitting right there in that row and rot in that row 
Uh, it's like anything else, you pick it too wet, it goes through the heat, and it'll rot. But uh, had Owen come in today, Owen's out of school right now, and uh, he moved the rolls for us. I'm glad he come and helped us. I, I didn't know he was out of school, to tell you the truth, but uh, he come in today and picked up all the rolls, got them out of the way. Uh, my cousin's gonna come down here and spread his chicken litter for us all on this farm. Then we're gonna work it in, plant it in wheat. Ain't with Pablo. Yeah. But like I was saying, Pablo's got our wheat ready. All we gotta do is put it in the planter, and uh, we'll be ready to plant some wheat. Um, we're gonna plant some wheat here in the next few three or four days, I'd say. Because uh, we gotta wait on this defoliation just a few more days. Uh, what I picked right here, that's where we started back spraying, and there's still some bowls in it. Uh, but it's only been sprayed seven days. I mean, what do you expect? So, we give it a little time. Uh, we got plenty of stuff to do in the meantime. Uh, ain't gonna be long when Pablo's going to go back to the gym. So, I'm gonna miss him. I know that. Yeah, that's what I do, Pablo. I let him get it started and then I go over there. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. Today is the day we start to plant a little wheat on 30 inch rows. Uh, we got the planter loaded up with some Pioneer 26R10 is what we're going to be planting. We're going to plant the whole kabang in that variety right there. This variety is known for tilling real well, so uh, we're going to give it a shot. I had to borrow my brother-in-law's tractor this morning because the 8R410 is down. There's a bunch of metal in the hydraulic filter, so I don't know what's happened. If the high pressure pump on the transmission blew up or what, don't know, but it won't move. So um, I borrowed my brother-in-law's 370 and uh, hooked it to the disc this morning and sent me go down there to lightly disc all that down there because it is so rough an airplane can't fly across it. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna try to figure out how many seeds for each we got right here. This has been one hell of a learning curve right here. First of all, it can't read all that seed. So we've had to trick the monitor about 27 different ways in order to plant this wheat. Uh, so we're gonna dig down here and see how many we got and uh, see if we can tell something about it. So I think we're playing it too thick right now. I got it set at 700,000, but I think we're way too thick. But yeah, I've been on the phone with Precision for an hour trying to get this thing set up. What do you got there, Pablo? Kind of hard to find them at first. We'll just try to find them, then we, then we dig back. We need a blower is what we need. All right, guys, we dug around. We got about three to four seeds per foot. We might back it down a little bit. We got it at 700,000 right now. Pablo's gonna run to the shop and get the handle to tie one of these tail wheels up so we can see the seed in the trench. Uh, it's so hard to find this wheat seed and you move it around when you dig for it. So I'm gonna make this first GPS pass right here. And uh, then we're gonna check it when he gets back and see how many seed we got in the trench. And that'll, that'll kind of give us a little mathematical equation. Uh, we just had Sean Bifford stop by, stop by. Appreciate him stopping by. He went up to Woodhalls to grab a grain check. He seen us stop by and hollered at us. Uh, he farms right down here in North Alabama. Appreciate him stopping by. And we've got several people that stop and wonder what we're doing. I reckon we're crazy, but all you guys are gonna be crazy with us. All right, guys, we're on the move to Brody's. We're coming by my brother-in-law. They're over picking cotton. Two cotton pickers, two movers, one, but one cutter. He done picked all this side over here. He got cotton sitting there where he's got a heck of a cotton crop. 
uh, four seats on 40 inch rows and uh, that lets the air in there a lot better and he also does a good job farming too but all this cotton up in this area right here for some reason we must have got a shower up here or something but this cotton's pretty good cotton up here uh, the corn was good corn up here but well, decent corn anyhow but uh 30 inch wheat planted going pretty good we've had no planter issues the only thing is we like i said we're toying with the population we're having to figure that out and uh running the math backwards uh we got the monitor set at about six hundred thousand. i think that's about where we need to be uh that's three seats per inch so we'll just have to play it by ears guys and when it comes up i mean who knows we may look like a he's a hero or we may look like a fool one two so we we ain't scared to try something uh like i said i don't care what people think of me don't care care less but it's always people like us me people like the extreme egg bunch willing to try something new all the time who knows we may learn something you know and it could be a complete failure we don't know we just don't know not until you try Welcome back. Another beautiful Saturday morning here in Tennessee. We are back fishing Brody's up. Uh, we ran out of seed last night. So we run our first two pro boxes out and we were just a little bit off. Not much, just a little on our population. So we backed it down another 50,000. So now we're at, now we're at 550,000. That should get us where we need to be. Uh, so we put two more pro boxes in we like one around here at Brody's having it finished up and uh, we're gonna pick cotton today my 410 is down uh, major major issues uh, pretty sure the transmission come apart so uh y'all know that's a leash tractor uh it comes from hudson ag 
I called Hudson last night and uh, they're aware of the problem. My local John Deere dealer is going to haul it in and start to work on it. But Hudson Ag is going to try to find me a tractor uh, to use because this tractor is going to be down for a while. There's no telling when they can even get a transmission. But uh, we took the hydraulic filters off and it was completely full of metal. When I say completely full, I mean completely full metal. So something major come apart in the transmission or charge pump or something. But guys, this wheat planting, it's all experimental. Uh, nobody's ever done it in my ear that I know of. But I mean, we're going to give it a fair shot. And uh, I know there's a lot of doubters out there. And uh, even my wife doubts me but if you get this thing right this 30 inch wheat will compensate guys uh it may not yield 100 bushel but what if it what if it yields 60 bushel and then you put uh double crop beans in here and make another 40 bushel you still money ahead or put double crop corn in here they make 140 150 bushel so there's a lot of thinking to this guys i mean uh, just because something's not supposed to be done that way don't mean it can't be done i mean you got to put your mind to things and try to figure things out that's just the way i'm wired i'm always thinking uh thinking how we can do something different with the equipment that we have or, or thinking how we can make more money with the equipment we have i mean we have all this high price equipment uh, just like this planter i mean it's it yeah, all it does is plant three crops uh why why can't we make it plant wheat and make it beneficial if this doesn't work we can still kill this off and plant between the middles uh, whatever crop we want to plant so use it as a cover crop i know i set this wheat right here up for the best possible success that it can have uh, we worked this ground up got it in great shape it's called a packed we're planting this wheat super early We've got a variety that will tiller really well. We've run our math and got our math close. So all the parameters are right up to this point. Now then, it's got to come up. It's got to tiller well. we got to do our part. Mother Nature's got to play ball. Then we probably make some wheat. But I'm going to put this wheat in the best environment that I can put it in in order for this 30 inch wheat to success you stick it in a bad environment you're going backwards already because you're this is going against everything that wheat is programmed to do wheat is not designed to be planted in 30 inch rows it's not designed really to be planted in 15 inch rows but we're going to trick that mentality and change it to where it will or we're going to try to. So, I, just, I talked to my buddy Dylan Joyce yesterday about it. And uh, I asked him if he thought I was crazy. And y'all know Dylan makes some darn good wheat. And the exact words that come out of his mouth is said, no. You'll probably be all right. So, uh, yeah that's the thing I, I, i've called a bunch of people and asked them about wheat questions about wheat because i'm not a wheat guy but i can tell you this much i'm gonna do my research and find out something about wheat look at them two standing out there in the middle of that field pablo and Miguel standing out there they always digging scratching trying to find seed 
Them boys are something else, I tell you. They, they, they good boys.